Section 5.7, the multiplication counting principle and permutations. A local restaurant offers a three course dinner menu where customers can choose one appetizer, one main dish and one dessert from the options shown in this table here. How many different meals can be ordered from this menu? Well, we could go ahead and try to list out all the possible orders. As you can see, this is gonna take quite a bit of time to get through all of the, the different combinations. So instead, it might be easier to make a tree diagram. We'll start off by choosing our appetizer. Each of those appetizers is paired with four options for a main dish. And then each of those main dishes is paired with the remaining two options for dessert. So we can see there's quite a few combinations here, right? For each appetizers, there's four things that can be paired with for the main dish and two for the dessert choices. Really, this simplifies just multiplying all of these different options. Three for the appetizer, four for the main dish, two for the dessert. There are 24 different meals in total that can be ordered. This is an example of the multiplication counting principle. The standard license plate in California has one digit followed by three letters, followed again by three more digits. The first digit can't be a zero. The first and third letters cannot be an I, an O, or a Q. How many possible license plates are there? We're gonna use that same multiplication counting principle for this problem. So when we talk about digits, we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. So there are 10 digits from zero to nine, uh, and then 26 letters in the alphabet. So the first, uh, the first item on this license plate the only stipulation is it's it can't be a zero, uh, so there's nine digits remaining. And the next one's a letter, which can't be an I, an O, or a Q, so there's 23 options for that one, et cetera, et cetera. And we're gonna multiply all these together, and there are 123,786,000 possible license plates. This basic premise can also help us determine how many different arrangements we can have from a group. So let's say we have five photographs of different family members. We want to arrange in a line on the top of our dresser. How many different ways can we do this? Well, for the first photo, there's five option options. Once we place that photo, there's four options for the next photo, so on and so on. So we just do five times four times three times two times one, 120 different photo arrangements. This kind of arrangement where the order matters Right, whether we put grandma first or we put our little nephew first uh, would lead to different arrangements. These are called permutations. A permutation is a distinct arrangement or a different arrangement of some group of individuals where the order is important. In the last problem, we did five times four times three times two times one. And problems where we take a number and we multiply it with everything, every number below it until we get to one is fairly common. And it's common enough that it has its own name. It's called a factorial. So rather than writing five times four times three times two times one, we would write five exclamation point, which means five factorial. And a factorial is just the product of all those integers from N down to one. The manager of a youth baseball team has picked nine players to start in an upcoming playoff game. How many different ways are there for the manager to arrange these nine players to make up the team's batting order? Well, just like the photos, there's nine options for the first batter, eight remain for the second batter, all the way down until we get that last batter where there's just one remaining. So nine factorial, 362,880 possible batting orders. Now, again, Order is important here because whether Luis bats first and Roberta bats second or vice versa creates different arrangements. Mr. Wilcox likes to get students in his stats class involved in the action, but he does not want to play favorites. Rather than have an Excel sheet like I do that will randomly select students, he writes all their names on a piece of paper, puts them to at, mixes them up, and then draws three out one at a time. These three students are given a job to do during class. The first student operates the display calculator, the next reads the homework answers, and then the third writes the class notes on the interactive whiteboard. How many different ways can Mr. Wilcox fill these three jobs? 
Now we don't want to jump immediately to a factorial here because we're not assigning roles to all 28 students and instead we're going to revert back to the multiplication counting principle. The first person that we choose there's 28 options and then the second there's 27 students remaining, 26 for the third, 19,656 ways that Mr. Wilcox can assign these three different jobs. This is called a, a permutation of three objects chosen from a group of 28. And we would write this mathematically with this notation right here, 28 P3. A lot of times we'll say 28 pick three where the P in pick indicates that this is a permutation. So when we have a permutation, we write it as NPR. N is the total number of items in our, our group. And then R is the number of uh, items we're selecting from that group. A youth baseball team has 15 players. How many different ways are there for the team's manager to select and arrange nine of these 15 players to make up the team's batting order? So for the first, there's 15 options. Then 14, 13, all the way down the line until we get nine batters in our lineup. So we would stop at seven. 1,816,000, oh, 1,816,214,400 possible batting orders. We can see the notation here, 15 P9, because there's 15 players in our group and we're choosing nine of them. So let's look again at that 15 P9 that we just solved in the previous slide. And we did 15 times 14 all the way down until we hit uh, all nine positions in our batting order. Uh, and of course, this is a bit much to put in our calculator. And depending on how big, how many items we're selecting from that group, that can get turned into a really long string. So there's another way we can solve these problems using the permutation equation. And to kind of explain what's going on here, if we did 15 factorial on top, all right, and then six factorial on the bottom, all right, and wrote them all out, you see we'd have that string in the numerator, string in the denominator, and all of these are gonna cancel out. Okay, so the question is where did that six come from when it's a nine up here? And that's the leftover, okay? So if we're choosing nine items, there's six left over. That goes on the bottom as a factorial. We put the full item on top as a factorial and that gives us our equation for permutation. Note, zero factorial equals one because we're talking about the ways that we can arrange a number of objects. And if we have zero objects, there's only one way to arrange them, which is really not to arrange them at all. 